Aloha. Hello. Aloha from session three. Of at Secure the Dip. Secure the Dip. Yeah, yeah, virtual summer. So this is session three. I'm Sam Styles. This is Daniel Acreage. Uh, we added CCP at the end of our title because Ooh. you just recently got the CCP. We might have gotten it at the same time at the same place. Correct. And uh, you know what? It's it's pass fail. And we both we did both really. Passed. We both passed <laughs> <laughs> so, really well. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, used to tell my mom, "D's get degrees." That's and right. I got got that piece of paper. So, uh, yeah, Daniel Akers here with Sam Styles at Summit Seven. So Daniel is the director of engagement at Summit Seven, and I'm the vice president of marketing. Uh, you've probably seen me on fire and and blowing out stuff and sipping on some refreshes la azure. La azure. So today we're going to talk about the CU Island. We are. We're going to talk about starting small with an enclave. Yep. And. Uh, probably debunk some some lies that are out there in the industry around enclaves and what mm -hmm. they can do and what they can't do um, but really it's it we're gonna have a good time we're gonna do a demo at the end we are so stick around for the demo Daniel's gonna walk us through that but we're gonna talk about CUI requirements yep what actually an enclave is mm -hmm. and then we're gonna walk through why you would use an enclave and like I mentioned the demo and then take some of your amazing questions yes we are all right you ready let's kick it off all right let's do it so CUI requirements, lots of logos on the screen. Lots of logos. Yeah. Some of those uh, are enforcing uh, CUI handling requirements or safeguarding requirements. Some are not yet. So what we're going to do is take a little walk down a timeline and kind of pull apart the ones that are and the ones that might in the future. Let's talk okay. about our good friend DFARS. Good, for, good friend DFARS 7012. It's got four major components of it. NIST 171 which everyone is well aware of by this point, 110 controls to be implemented, 320 assessment objectives, cyber incident reporting, so being able to report within 72 hours of discovery of an incident that's taken place, your good friend subcontractor flow down, making sure that your subs are also protecting CUI to the same requirement. And then the last one, which is the one of, honestly, some of the most contention would be the FedRAMP requirement. So FedRAMP being a data center requirement specifically of at least a moderate baseline or what they call moderate equivalency. Uh, one thing to be aware of, and we get this all the time, you know, what is FedRAMP moderate equivalency? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, it's not clearly defined anywhere, including in this DFAR 7012 clause. However, after multiple conversations with the DOD, uh, we finally pulled it out of them saying, you know, something that would pass FedRAMP equi moderate equivalency would be a 3PAO, not a C3PAO, a 3PAO right. coming to assess the NIST 853 moderate FedRAMP baseline, basically, uh, and then attesting that you have met the controls uh, that are required for that. So that would be an equivalency. You don't have to be fully authorized inside of the FedRAMP marketplace, but you do have to have done the work and shown that you've done the work successfully. And then recently in the last few weeks, we've seen DHS come out with a CUI rule. DHS has. So DHS following in some of the same footprints, uh, NIST 171, cyber incident reporting, um, the interesting thing about them is that DOD has a 72 hour, DHS could potentially go all the way down to just a few hours notification, depending on what type of information uh, the incident surrounded, like sensitive personal identifiable information or SPII or PHI, uh, as some, uh, they might also have. So yeah, the last one being subcontractor flow down, nothing too crazy there. Hey, make sure that your subs are protecting the data to the same requirements. One thing you don't see in that is uh, the FedRAMP requirement that hasn't been uh, called out. However, the cyber incident reporting requirement very easily could play in some of the requirements around like the Microsoft GovCloud, mm -hmm. right? That it, it responds to a higher level of uh, cyber incident than the commercial cloud does. Right. So. And I moved a little ahead of you because I got excited. You did. You did. The draft of Rev3, 171 Rev3, yep. recently came out. So this is an interesting document. Public comment, I think, is either about to close or might have just closed. Um, so NIST standard 171 Rev3, when you crack it open, it's, guess what? It's still like 110 controls, right? right? So it's really not much looks like it's been changed. However, what they did was they removed some controls, uh, and they consolidated some, and then they added some new ones. So some of the ones that are the most impactful would be things like application allow listing only. Mm -hmm. So before you had either allow or deny options, um, um, now you can only do allow listing. Yeah, and you recently wrote a blog about the takeaways from the draft of Rev3, mm -hmm. and we'll put a link in the chat to that. You can check it out, but it's, it really highlights a couple different things. And uh, we're getting there. We're going to talk about enclaves, but we're yep. trying to give context for CUI and why we're talking about that, right? That's right. So, all right. 
couple other things. External proxy was added, which is a fun thing. Um, and a lot of other kind of cryptography and encryption possible changes coming down the pipe. Uh, best recommendation, as we say all the time, if you haven't done Rev2, probably don't really look at Rev3 yet. Make sure that you're getting Rev2 underway. Um, you're not going to be missing anything. And again, it's still a draft. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the main ones that we like to talk about out of the new Rev3 version, though, however, is the independent assessments. Mm -hmm. So everyone's giving the DoD a hard time with CMMC saying, hey, guys, you got to get an assessment, right? You got to get a third party or an independent assessment to make sure that you're meeting all these requirements uh, at a level two and then potentially a level three status as well uh, with a DIBCAC assessment, right? So NIST said, you know what? Might be a good idea to get someone else outside of somebody in your company to assess how good you've implemented these controls. And so independent assessments would require somebody outside of your organization to come and assess you, not necessarily to um, pass and give you a certification per se, but just to assess where you stand uh, in relation to the implementation that you've done. Right. Uh, then later in the year, 2024, early 2024, uh, they're expected to release the final version mm -hmm. of NIST 800 Rev3. Yep. We don't know exactly when that's gonna take place, um, but we've been told Q1, so it's a pretty safe place to assume. Um, one interesting thing, and we'll see how the DOD handles this, DFAR 7012 calls out that uh, at time of solicitation or award, you have to use the current version of NIST 800 So you might have some contracts coming in after the NIST 800 Rev3 is released, meaning you potentially will have to modify like SPRS, right? Some different uh, scoring that you've done there. We'll wait to see what the DOD does with their assessment methodology and the timing of that requirement. Probably going to be after the Rev3 release. Hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. They're good <laughs> at it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ready? Yep. Let's keep going. Uh, last but not least, we saw a lot of logos, right? Some of those are still represented on this screen. Some are not. Um, the interesting thing here is that there's a, a higher a higher calling, you could say, mm -hmm. of protection of CUI that's going to take place. Uh, the FAR CUI rule, uh, which has been in works for many, many years at this point, uh, the DHS CUI ruling actually mentions it a lot, yeah. saying, hey, guys, it's kind of coming, you know. Uh, this would require a minimum baseline of handling CUI uh, or safeguarding CUI uh, across all agencies in their contracting base. Right. So you can do more, but you can't do less than 171 is basically what this is going to say. And the previous slides we just showed to give you context for what we're going to talk about in saying we're likely not moving away from 171 to protect CUI. That's right. That's what the writing on the wall says. That's right. And right? incident response is something that's also not really changing. We see agencies yeah. adopting different I'm, things. From, so. a, from a takeaway perspective, if there's anything you can take away from this section, yep. right, as we move forward, it's do NIST 800 171, 171. do that, yep. and then also do incident response. Do incident response. In the words of Michael Scott, do you think doing incidents response is cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, you know, write that down, write that down. <laughs> and That's then write important. that down. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. What, one additional kind of fun takeaway, talking about instant response for just a second. Yeah, I'll go back. Uh, the SEC is also looking to release something, get in the game around incident response, mm -hmm. uh, where you'd have to do a disclosure within four business days of like a material cybersecurity incident. So not only are we looking at like federal agencies doing this, but potentially drifting into the overall private sector too. So yeah. make sure you got some stuff underway. Okay. Ready? Yep. Let's do it. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's get into the islands. Ooh, okay. Talk about CU Island. CU Island. Let's do it. All right. So an enclave. Yep. Part of the CAP, which we studied. We learned this. Quite a bit. Yes, okay. we did. So the official definition of an enclave is a segmentation of an organization's network that is intended, or data, that is intended to wall off that network or database from all other networks or systems. You said you didn't have this as part of your test for I CCP. I didn't have it in mind. I had this one. Okay. So I specifically remember... Oh, I know what that is. Because <laughs> if you remember wall off, it's a good way to think about I can wall off my That's data, right. right? And so from the official documentation, the cap, uh, which is going to get updated as well. Very cool. So. Congratulations, you made it. We're here, about to go to the last session. As you can tell, the sun's setting behind me and uh, it's been a long day, but 
We've got one more in store for you. So we're going to talk about why companies can't afford to not have an MSP slash MSSP. Take it away, guys.